Hi everybody, it's David and Brian with Greenwood Estates Realty bringing you April's Real Estate Insight. And the topic this month is maxing out your curb appeal. And so we've kind of broken this down into three components. The house, landscaping, and hardscaping. Now obviously the house is probably the most important. So what goes into maxing out your curb appeal for your house? And obviously you could have the house painted, that's gonna be a big one. If it pops from the street, that will bring a lot of buyers when they arrive. It'll give them that warm feeling and it'll start the showing off on the right foot. We also have updating, updating like your light fixtures on your porch. And one that we both agree is vastly overlooked but can be a very subtle, low cost, high return item, which is upgrade your house address numbers. If those are fresh and big, it just has a very subtle impact on the buyer psychology as they enter the house. Absolutely. Uh, one additional uh, update you might decide to do would be update your mailbox. Um, we, we've all seen the neighbor's mailbox, and, and if you haven't, uh, maybe it's your mailbox that is totally dated. It's rusted out. Um, you know, you got to worry about rainstorms, uh, you know, potentially, uh, uh, you know, sogging up your mail because there's holes, you know, in it from rust over the years get a new mailbox if that's you and then you know to david's point the front door and the shutters those can be painted in, uh, in uh, an accent color to really make it pop right uh we see fix and flippers all the time you know do this right where they you know they have like a nice big bold you know red front door and, and maybe you know red shutters you know to match um you know they they do that because they know they're going to get the highest roi the highest bang for their buck so you know why not do it yourself if you really want to max out your curb appeal all right so that covers the house now let's talk about the landscaping when someone pulls up to their house they're instantly looking at the landscaping is it fresh is it manicured is it dead is it you know all those things right because they're already building out their first impression of the house and if the landscaping is fresh and vibrant and manicured and curated they instantly think these sellers have maintained this house and again we're all about managing perception as the buyer shows up to your house so what are some things that you can do to improve your landscaping yeah right so so there's really two types of landscaping right there's the traditional landscape which is going to be like your trees and your bushes right and then there's going to be uh zero scaping uh otherwise known as colorado scaping right and that's going to be looking kind of more towards your native uh you know vegetation so kind of diving into that a little bit more so for traditional as mentioned kind of trees bushes uh something that we like if if you don't already uh like have um you know uh, shrubs or trees um and you want to plant something we love spartan junipers uh those are awesome they grow very quickly um they they um you know uh, aren't too uh uh i guess wide uh, there's a there's a good uh, spread i guess that i think that might be the the term for you know arborist arborist use and they can be great for delineating property lines you know, as well as just making a nice, you know, beautiful, um, you know, accent piece to the yard um, year, year round. Yep. And from a zero scaping standpoint, right? Oh, so oh actually, before you do that, I gotta, I gotta remind everyone too: prune your trees and shrubs, right? Because we've all been on Zillow, right? We've all seen homes that, um, you know, it actually looks like you're buying a, sh you know, tree and a shrub with you know a tree attached you know to 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 the property right it overwhelms the space don't let that happen to you yes good call um and remember from a zero scaping standpoint there are certain cities like castle rock that <clears throat> essentially don't even allow you to put in grass in your in your landscaping plans so or or not very much right i yeah. think it's like aurora uh, you're right in Castle Rock, right? They'll maybe allow you to put like 30 or 40 percent, you know, of of your your yard to grass, right? So to David's point, right? What would you do with the rest of that that space? Yeah, there's there's a lot of different things that you can do, and obviously it has to all come together. Uh, and then probably the best investment that we would say, if you only could do one thing, it's low cost, it's easy, easy on the back in terms of landscaping, which is put in new mulch, right? You don't need to overdo it he's got some examples here 100 percent, 100 percent. this is this stuff's cheap right and it you spend a couple hours run home depot run to lowe's 
grab mulch, you know, spread it out. You don't even have to get rid of the old mulch. Just put the new mulch right over it, you know, put a layer on it. You can get the natural stuff. You can get uh, rubbered, uh, rubber recycled, you know, mulch, but get it in a bold color. Let it really pop. Let it complement everything else, um, you know, in your yard. And it's going to look fantastic. So do yourself a favor, uh, get that. Uh, real quick back to zero scaping right um, you know that that's a that's a fascinating and you know, and growing area of, of landscaping we are by no means experts in that you know we we, we can't really tell you a whole lot about hydro hydro uh, zones if, if I you know I said that right you know or granita raspberry ice plants or feather weed grass right uh, we can show you some pictures which will uh, which we will in this video but uh, we don't know a whole lot about that but research 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 because that's going to be a growing uh you know and marketable um asset i think uh going forward yeah remember buyers of the future may not have a lot of interest in maintaining a big wide yard and so they might like the zero scape aspect so just keep that in mind when you're making these decisions and last is hardscape right you know we all have cement sidewalks and driveways and so if your driveway looks like someone came out and jackhammered it for the last three days you probably want to address that right it's it's going to create that perception that there's a lot of other things that could be wrong on this house so yeah again a little bit more expensive uh not our favorite thing to spend money on but if the driveway is cracked and shifted and sunken yeah probably important to two things to do with your hard skating if you see this significant slant and it looks terrible mud jacket or polyurethane it essentially it's the same you know different materials but it does the same thing they'll drill a hole through the hardscape and then they'll inject whether uh you know concrete or a polyurethane type product uh and and so then it'll end up raising uh right the 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 concrete slab or or you um, know really yeah uh, or asphalt etc and it'll, it'll raise that to, to make it even as to where it should be and then the second part is that um you know, there's all sorts of crud in our concrete, right? So it's amazing if you spend a couple hours or hire someone to power wash the concrete. It refreshes it, it brightens it, makes it look great. Yep, exactly. So thanks for joining us today. Remember, we're, you're, we're more than just your realtors. We're your real estate advisors. If you have a question about anything real estate related. Or you want a referral for any of these items. Any of them, because we've used all of them pretty much. Um, reach out. We're always here to help. Have a good day.